A reading from the Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, and as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and we will be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. Happy Pentecost. This fiery, windy explosion of languages and the gift of the Holy Spirit. If we were together, there would be red banners waving, a sea of people dressed in red, and a sheet cake and a truly spectacular pool party after church. As we know too well, we cannot do any of that this year. But thanks to our talented and multilingual lectors, we can keep telling about what happened that day, 50 days after the Passover, seven weeks after the resurrection. We can keep telling the story of the Holy Spirit on the loose. But for this Pentecost, at this time, it might make more sense to turn back a few days to a chapter before, turn back to the days before this Pentecost moment. The disciples had all witnessed the resurrection of Jesus and at least knew of his ascension. And they had all heard Jesus tell them to wait, tell them in multiple ways that something new was coming after him something that would help them be the witnesses to God's love Jesus commanded them to be. So they waited. They gathered together in one house and they prayed and they waited and they waited and prayed. The only thing they knew for certain was that Jesus was gone. The rest was a mystery. When this gift would appear, or what Jesus' promise might look like. I imagine they were even uncertain if they would have the strength to leave the house, let alone be witnesses to God's love in the world. And doesn't that sound familiar? We all know something of what it's like to sit at home and wait and hope and pray. We've been waiting to see loved ones, to know they are safe, waiting for normalcy to return, whatever that will mean, waiting to hear news of vaccines and an end to this pandemic. Maybe it's just me, but as things start to open up, there's a renewed sense of uncertainty to the waiting. On the one hand, there's the deep want and honestly need, I feel, to see and hug people. And on the other hand, there's the real weight and fear and risk that accompanies interactions with people. Whoever knew we would 
ever be debating the ethics and safeties of leaving our house just to go to the grocery store or to church. For the disciples, their holy waiting and watching comes to an end on this holy feast day. We hear of the rushing of a violent wind, tongues of fire appearing among them, and new, previously unknown languages coming out of their mouths. And the whole thing is so noisy and chaotic and insane looking that onlookers watch and assume that those disciples are just drunk in the middle of the day. Yet Peter tells all who will listen that this is God's spirit pouring into them. Preacher and teacher Walter Brueggemann likes to say that there are three things we know for certain about Pentecost. One, the Spirit is surging to make things new. Two, we know that the surge of the Spirit creates the church, according to the narrative in the book of Acts. And three, we know that Protestants do not talk much about the Spirit because it makes us nervous to have things so out of control. Just look at the markers of the Holy Spirit. Wind and fire. Throughout scripture, God makes use of wind and fire to sustain and renew the people of God. Breath or wind from God is there at creation, hovering over the void and then breathed into the human being God molds out of mud. Fire calls Moses into leadership that day in front of the burning bush. And then it is a column of fire that leads God's newly freed people through the desert. Yet I do not need to remind any of us in Southern California about the dangers of fire and wind. We all know too well their destructive powers. As professor and pastor Catherine Schiffendecker wrote in a blog this week, Perhaps this dichotomy makes wind and fire particularly appropriate symbols for the work of the Holy Spirit in our time. As we all wait in the wreckage of what was and is, and as we wait for the birth of what will be, this is the moment to pray and dream with God for all the needs we have for all that needs to be burned and blown away from our old way of doing things, and all that needs to be renewed and have new life as we imagine new normals. On a personal level, I pray for the Holy Spirit to burn away some of my own impatience and indifference. I pray for renewal and paying attention to the gifts this time has revealed. The gift of slowing down and making time and space for people and practices. The truly painful gift of realizing that for me, face-to-face -face moments with people are life-giving and holy treasures. Certainly. This time has brought into focus that which needs to be blown away and that which needs to be renewed in our community. Our time at home has made the inequities of our community starkly apparent. We've seen what happens to those who do not have adequate access to health care or health outcomes. What happens to those without access to quality food and shelter access to technology and education, access to public safety, access to feeling protected without fear. We've seen the heart-rending worst of us. Yet at the same moment, we've seen the very best. Unprecedented cooperation as scientists and doctors around the world share findings and insights. Scrappy, creative, 
ways that people have found to serve one another's neighbors stepping up to feed and care for neighbors that before this they didn't even really know people loudly and quietly finding ways to celebrate our heroes we've glimpsed the glint of god doing amazing and things and giving us the courage to keep moving forward so this Pentecost, we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and you shall renew the face of the earth. I used to roll my eyes when people would say, the Holy Spirit is working in this place. I thought that was a cop out a fill-in when people wanted to say something vague but nice. But then I learned. I seen people, friends and family members reconciling when I thought reconciliation was truly impossible. I have witnessed resurrection happening in places and people that I had written off. I've seen love and compassion pour out of the least likely sources. I've learned the hard way that praying, come Holy Spirit, come, is a powerful way to invite real chaos and renewal. On this Pentecost Sunday, as we wait and watch and hope and pray, may we continue to be on the lookout for the Spirit to send the winds of chaos creativity, and change into our lives. May we be renewed. My St. Matthew's family, the Holy Spirit was and is and ever will be at work here, now and in each of us. I pray that we can listen. I pray that we can dream alongside the Spirit and I pray that in the midst of all the Spirit is tearing down and making new, we can be right there. Amen.